everything. She cries a lot. I always felt like she kind of struggled with her potential and didn't really know how great she was and how great she could be. Just told her what I thought about her game and how great I thought she was and how amazing of a player she is. Honestly, you can't even, I didn't even know that Keisha was going through the thing that she was going through. Um, she got over it. She definitely is better than a lot of people because she didn't like a lot of people when they get hurt. They put it all on social networks. Everybody knows you were. There's only a select few that could tell you that they knew she had a time in this case. She was just worried about how she was going to get back and what the comeback was going to be like. Only way to get that pay yeah. Keep going, keep going, don't stop Grind hard till you hit the top yeah. One day your shit gon' pop yeah. One day your shit gon' pop yeah. Keep yeah. going, keep going, don't stop yeah. Grind hard till you hit the top yeah. One day your shit gon' pop So your knee injury? Yeah, um My knee injury It was uh, very unexpected Like, I don't know why When or how it happened I just know it did and when it did, I felt like my whole life was just down the drain. Like, um, and I think it got my depressed. Like, it caused me to be depressed. I didn't even know I was depressed. Like, it was just like progressively. Like, my mindset was just getting worse. Like, um, just really ne like a, just a, a. I felt like hopeless. Like, like I I can't even really explain it in words or how I felt. Um, I've always related to music, so I just remember feeling like um, just different songs that I would always listen to, and it, like they're very depressing. But it was like it was okay because I was depressed. Like I felt what that artist was saying. So it just was weird, but I remember um, feeling like I couldn't even really walk sometimes. Like, and the the staff, the my teammates, the doctors, everybody did like a really great job with like getting me through uh, mentally and physically. So it was like, cause I was still playing. Like I played every game, never set out, and I'm playing like 40 minutes each game. So it was just like. In that time, I didn't feel a thing. Or at least I kept telling myself I didn't. But when I would go home, like to my dorm, I would just break down like every single day. Like, like if you ask any of my teammates, they tell you I'm a like I was crying all the time. Um, just really, just sad. Like, just like I don't even can't, I can't really even explain it. But it was just like. Going, and I was in rehab five times a day, like all day. It was like practice, class, rehab, 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 ice, ice, ice. Like, so I was doing what I was supposed to do. I think it was more mental, and that's what um, everybody kept telling me. Like my coaches, they was like, it's just mental. Like you gotta get over the mental hurdle. But for me, I've never been injured before, so it was just like, what is this? It was just like going to school all over again. My first year, looking at. Um, college like what is this where am I at like this it was all new for me so I didn't know how to handle it but I drew from my teammates their energy their just support like my coaches like um, people around me like I'm constantly inspired so it was just like different people that I met throughout the time I was going through my depression like each person I don't know if they know it or not it helped me kind of like come up out of it just a little bit so it was just like I remember just one day, Coach Staley, I guess you can see it was really like like messing with my brain. Like, it was crazy. She came to my dorm and gave me her personal uh, ankle weights from like the Olympics. It's like the same weights that she used since she first started playing basketball. So it was just like, in that moment, it was just like, thanks, Coach. But looking back on it, it's like, yo, these are Dawn Staley's weights. Like, like she really like everybody cared and I know that from the bottom of my heart it was just like she wanted me to feel good like she you know what I mean so because she went through her her share of things as well so it was just like I'm listening to what she's saying I'm I'm believing what she's saying I'm believing what everybody on my team around me is saying like from my t like my family at South Carolina to my family back at home 
my friends, I'm believing that you're going to be okay. Like, you're going to come back stronger than ever. Like, I'm believing it. So it was just like, okay, I'm going to be okay. So for me, it was just frustrating because I was trying to practice and I don't like to to lose and I don't like like if I'm gonna guard you you're not like my mind is like you're not gonna score and if you do it's gonna be hard so it was like getting beat or not being able to penetrate and go do what I was doing before it dem demolished my brain it was just like that's frustrating because I'm moving but it hurts so bad um I'm moving but my legs on fire like just it was just like a lot of stuff and I just remember like I could have like a, a very good game like after the game everybody happy I'm like I'm like all right love y'all bye crying my eyes out like crying laughing laughing to keep from crying it was just like it was crazy but I had a great support system again like my friends my teammates everybody was like you gonna be straight after one of my surgeries my I'm just like I feel good like I was outside um, I had my crutches but I took a car ride like the very next day and like um I remember I was just, I felt great I'm like oh my knee doesn't even hurt anymore and then like four o'clock in the morning I think my I just remember waking up screaming crying like my whole leg was on fire and my teammates came over I guess they called the doctor you were supposed to take your medicine like we told you to like I said it's new for me so I'm like okay I got medicine but I don't need it I feel great like so it's like I guess what I got in the hospital had worn off by that time so my dumb self just on fi I'm like on fire like about to die like literally um, it was crazy and even like just playing and just competing every single day in practice or I remember being upset because in preseason I wasn't able to go as hard as my teammates or like I wanted they was getting it in like they worked very very hard at, at South Carolina so it's just like it I was mad that I couldn't get out there and compete with them or do what they were doing because I just I couldn't do it and if I did it wasn't like a hundred percent so it was just like uh it it was just frustrating for me personally and then it was like I was like I said I was succeeding I was on TV I was on the billboards like I was I had all this nice stuff happening but inside I was like dead like I had been died a long time ago but nobody really knew it so I mean and I remember um coming out of it like this one time I was this was my senior semester too I was in rehab and I literally could not lift the little like the thing where you push your legs out against the weights I couldn't do that like body weight I'm like this is bad like I'm I'm a senior um if I'm trying to go overseas or try to try out for WVA, like I can't even do this. I'm just like, this is crazy. So I would just have these really bad outbursts and just like tears and crying and just like, but I was always myself, like making jokes, laughing. It was just like, I was crying. Like I didn't care about crying in front of my teammates. They, they already knew what, what was happening with me. Like, um, so it was like that instance or like not being able just to do what, like, a a squat like my body weight it was just like it was a it was weird for me um even after college when I graduated just being like when I was living in Atlanta waking up sometimes and like not being really able to walk it was just like this is not fair like I didn't do nothing like now I'm out of school so it's like what am I supposed to do I don't have this fancy like trainer room to like go and do whatever so I just tried to do what I could do in the house from what I remembered um, my late exercises they taught me there. Um, I just, like, it was just frustrating. Uh, but I played in Atlanta. I played in this in my pro league. And I think I used that to get my leg muscle memory back or just to get my confidence back. Like, I was I was doing well. Like, when I remember this one time, I had, like, 30 points. And I went home and just crying still, just up, just angry, really, because I just felt like it wasn't fair. And I didn't know what to do or like what was next. And I remember just praying, like I'm not, like I just remember praying, like God, like I don't know what's happening, like I don't know what, what's about to happen, but if you want me to continue to play basketball, just show me a sign, like that's all I need. Like I remember, it was like tell me or just 
let me know if this is what you want me to do. If so, I'll keep going through all this, like, the pain. And, like, I just, if basketball is not in your plans for me, then show me that sign so I can just stop. Like, I remember talking, like, to myself and, had, like, really saying that prayer. And literally, like, the next day, I didn't feel nothing. It was, like, crazy. So I'm like, okay, like, that was weird. Okay. And then the sign I think I, I got was... Um, linking up with Pat, Pat the Rock and Hoop Culture. Cause it was literally like the next day, I remember in the morning hearing like the dude on my phone from Twitter and it was like, Pat, like, what's up little sis? I'm about to be in Atlanta, I wanna work out with you. I was like, I'm not working out with him. Like this man work out with NBA players, college, like all Americans and all that stuff. I'm like, nah, like my knees broke. I'm out of shape. Like I wasn't really out of shape, it was just like, mm-mm just uncertain and my family was like just do it like this is what you do basketball like just do, if you can't do it just stop so I went and it was like super fun like it wasn't nothing crazy and it was just like pat like that work that one workout complete stranger it is reminding me of how good I can be or the feeling of playing basketball. I mean, I always played, but it was just like, my confidence just came back out of nowhere. Like, oh, we doing all this ball handling and shooting. I'm like, this is what I, this is what I do. Like, this is, so that session with him, it just really inspired me to like, just ramp it up all over again. Work hard, LA Fitness, doing my own thing, like trying to get my legs back underneath me. And not knowing it, every day I just went, I, it was nothing else to do in Georgia for me personally. I stayed in the gym. Then it's like the overseas contract came, went over there, did good. I was prepared, like, didn't even know it. Hola. Hola, soy Vicky, la fan número uno de Ecuador. <laughs> Making out with my number one fan here in Ecuador. She made me this picture. Basketball is basketball, so that part was easy for me. Uh, it was more so like trying to learn a language because I'm, I'm always trying to do something new or challenge myself. So I, I didn't have problems with like homesickness or anything like that because, like I said, I have a very great circle of friends. So we talked every day, um, literally every day, just communicating. I, I didn't feel like I was away from home because I was so connected to everybody. And I think uh, Team Fan Favorite made it even more fun for me because I was meeting, not meeting them, but being able to really interact with them like on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Like, I felt like I felt like I was at home, honestly. It was just, I had different money, like different currency. Christmas, no assistance, just that persistence with that commitment. When she's, you know, in front of people and she's doing her fan favorite thing, or even when she's on the court, she's got this, like, you know, this, like, wall up and, like, this is just, you know, I gotta I'm focus on what I'm doing. But when you get to know her, she's very, very silly. Tell me what is enough to prove I am ready for love. She's very personable. She likes to have fun. She likes to make jokes. Um, she's obsessed with Aaliyah, the, the singer, R.I.P. Um, yes, probably one of her biggest, if not her biggest, inspiration. Um, um, real briefly, talk, <laughs> talk about your admiration for Aaliyah. Aaliyah, Aaliyah um, let me just make this really short and simple. Since I remember, uh, I've always been a fan of hers. Like, you would think I know the, like, I knew her personally. Like, the way I, like, I really be just going hard or just get emotional sometimes. I don't know what it is, but I just had, like, a, a strong respect for her. Um, she was very, very, very pretty. Like, she was nice, soft-spoken, just everybody loved her. And I'm like, yo, she's dope. Like, from 
watching her dance and wishing I could dance like her to doing her dances. Even when I was overseas, like it's cardio, like it was, it was like crazy. Um, and I remember like every school project I would write like if I got to pick the subject, it was on Leah. Like I did PowerPoints on like it was just I was a fan, like and it really hit me when I Skyped one of the members of Team Fan Favorite. Just random Skype. And this girl was really crying, like freaking out on the computer. And I'm looking at her like, yo, I'm a regular person. Like and she's like, Oh my god, you really FaceTime me. I can't believe it. Shaking, like her hands are shaking in front of me on the computer. Again, weird for me. Like, I don't put myself on a pedestal. So my brother, Rodney, was just like, Keisha, imagine if you got to, like, Skype Aaliyah or if you got a chance to spend a day with her or you was able to talk to her or she replied back to you on um, social media. So when he put it in that perspective, it was just like, all right, I get it. Like, it just kind of it's weird. And a lot of my friends say that I remind them of her. So it just, I don't know. Aaliyah's dope. Um, I felt like we all hurt when she passed away. I just, for me personally, I'm going to keep her legacy alive because she was a part of my childhood and she still is. So it's like music, videos, like if you around me, you talking to me, you're going to hear about Aaliyah, period. Speak of her, uh, talk about her admiration for uh, uh, Aaliyah. <laughs> Uh, we would find Lakeisha sometimes stuck in the mirror, <laughs> admiring herself, um, because for some reason she thought that she looked like a leader. Um, I thought the only resemblance was that they were both fair skinned, but Lakeisha ended up, one guy came in, Lakeisha ended up doing her hair, having her hair down, I don't, I don't know, it, it, she, she bought some weave or something and made her hair longer, but she was in the mirror admiring herself and singing a Leah song. And, we couldn't tell anything different. I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of that.